quick brown fox jump over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. <laughs> Howdy folks and welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. We thought since we had such a cornucopia of Corona typewriters available to us today that we would also do a very quick flyby of this Corona standard. This is a 1939 model that has a uh, two, uh, 2S, sorry 2C, 2C uh, serial number and it is very similar in design to the later 1941 uh, sterling we have here. But I just wanted to give you a quick uh, overview of some of the highlights that are different. So it's most stylistically different. We have a single chevron uh, which was later as we can see replaced by two stripes or a chevron with a peak uh, off screen if you will. And the uh, typewriter is pretty much uh, the same with the exception of the paper tray. So here we have uh, the paper fingers instead of a paper bale which is, shows up on the sterling anyway. Uh, I'm not sure what, uh, what the lower end model had in the Model 3, but the 3S Sterling uh, definitely had uh, the paper bale, which is different. Um, we have the same speed line design, and that was a change from the square line, <clears throat> or flat top as most folks call them, design, which was much more angular and square from the early 30s, so about 1936 is our other example. But here we have a speed line, we have our controls, which is the ribbon reverse manual, we have our shift lock, our shift key, a floating shift, which indicates that this was a segment shifted machine. <clears throat> we have a standard keyboard layout, which means there is no number one, dedicated number one, you'd use the lowercase l or exclamation point. We do have a ribbon color selector, so red, white, and blue, uh, white being the stencil. Now, on your right hand shift, or really let's look at all the shifts, they had a big uh, logo called Floating Shift, not only there, but also right in the middle of the segment, uh, which shows they were kind of proud of it. So that was the big uh, marketing differentiator, I think, that you had a segment shifted machine. But sometimes, if you're lucky, you can find a machine like this one, and it is ironic because it is a standard, that has had a very nice dealer service tag embedded in the key. And they almost always put it on the right shift. Uh, and this one was standard typewriter and its phone number, I believe that's what the Atlantic stands for, Atlantic 0342, and I think of Transylvania 65000 for that. But that was at Fifth and Liberty in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And of course those streets are still there, but there's no sign of where the standard typewriter company may have been in the past. But they obviously uh, existed and they did good service on this particular machine because it came to us in very nice shape. All right, we'll just give you a flyby of our creaky lazy Susan. Here is your line uh, selector, so a single and double space, that's all you have. Uh, your carriage release lever, nice metal, your carriage return lever, your Bakelite uh, platen knobs. Now if you pull out on this knob, you will disengage the ratcheting and now you can position the platen where you want it to be uh, for lines. We have a very simple but very useful uh, margin setting. You push and you slide. Um, we have everything in back here is it was either uh, done in a nickel coating or just left, quote, in the white, as they say in the gunsmithing world. There is no bluing. And interestingly, when you got to the later versions, at least in the Sterling upgraded model, this was all blued, uh, which is kind of nice because it protects it against rust. Um, it's just an interesting differentiation that they had going on. And I think, as we mentioned previously, we have the paper fingers. These slide along a slot right here, this little... Um, Oh, I don't know, this little piece of metal, they're clipped into that and they slide back and forth and that's what holds your paper to your platen. That was later replaced with a paper bale or supplemented with a paper bale and then finally went away, not until the 5AXs all the way in the early 60s did we lose the paper fingers for the last time. Opening up the hood, if you will, moving this out of the way to avoid the scratch mark, we'll see our uh, touch control, our standard keyboard, uh, slugs, and then we have metal vintage ribbon spools, and I always like to leave those in when I can. Uh, and there's pretty much your standard Smith Corona layout. It's remarkable how long this design lasted because they didn't do much changing of anything under the hood, even though they did, of course, change the styling. All right, that is a very fast mm -hmm. flyby of a Smith Corona, aka Corona Standard from 19. 
39, right before World War I broke out, a remarkable time capsule of what was going on in our country and in the world uh, in that time. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll like to see you later. Happy New Year's! Please like and subscribe and share the video and comment about the typewriter. What a specific thing that you want to know about the typewriter. And also hit the bell button and the subscribe.